Hello, I'm Bill Kinney. This is video number 28 in my series on the foundations of algebra, arithmetic, and geometry. Subseries on decimals, real numbers, and percentages with an emphasis on calculator usage. It's part 7 of that subseries, which is the third main subseries. In the last video, we saw that it um, seems to be the case that pretty much any fraction you could write down, if you did long division, you would eventually see, because you would come back to the situation you started with, that you'd get a repeating decimal. We saw that here with 521st. We ultimately got down to here and saw that the pattern would repeat after that point, and therefore we'd get a repeating decimal for the decimal representation of the number. We also started a little bit of algebra to help us see another way to derive the fact that 0.3 repeating in this case was one-third. I want to do a similar example to that in this video, a harder example, to get us some more practice with algebra and just see that it, it really does continue to work, that anytime you have a repeating decimal, it can be converted to a fraction. Um, let's see. I'm just going to make something up here. Let's say you have 0 0.8, 4, 1, 2, 5, 1, 2, 5, 1, 2, 5, where the 1, 2, 5s are going on forever and ever. How could we convert that to a, um, a rational number? Well, let's call it x. And the goal is to figure out what x is as a, a rational number, as a fraction, where the numerator and denominator are integers. What should you do? In the last video, with the 1 -third, the 0 0.3 repeating, I multiply both sides of this equation by 10. Does the same trick work here? Not quite. Turns out that because the repeating pattern here, the 1, 2, 5 repeating, has three digits, Instead of multiplying both sides by 10, it's better to multiply both sides by 1,000. The reason being is because it's three digits there, and because 1,000 is 10 to the third power. It's 10 times 10 times 10. If I multiply it by 1,000, it's going to move the decimal to the right three places, which is ultimately going to allow the 1, 2, 5s to match up in the following way. Watch what I write down here. I'm going to put it up here. A thousand times x is just, well, a thousand times x. I could put the dot in there, but I won't. By the way, the x is not a multiplication. It's just a letter here. It's an unknown. It's a symbol representing the thing we want to find. I move the decimal place to the left three spots, and I'm going to squish the 841 in here like that. That's supposed to be an 841 this decimal. I'm trying to line it up as best as I can here. And then I continue with everything else. 2, 5, 1, 2, 5, 1, 2, 5, 1, 2, 5. And now you see, based on how I've lined this up, why I multiplied by 1,000. It's so that everything from here on out matches up, and therefore when I subtract it, those are going to go away. it will be a bunch of zeros. What's a thousand minus x? A thousand x minus x? Think about that. It's 999x. If you have a thousand apples and you subtract one apple, you have 90, 999 apples if you want to imagine the x's as representing apples. You can also think of it in terms of factoring out an x in the symbolic expression 1000 x minus x. I think of x as 1 times x. Because of the distributive property, the x can be factored out like that. And you get 999x. What happens on the right? Well, like I said, the, the 1, 2, 5 parts go away. In essence, you're just left with 841.25 minus 0.84. What's that going to be? That'll be 840. I do this. Here's how I do this in my head. If I was subtracting 1, I'd be 
at 840.25. 0.84 is 0.16 less than 1, so I've got to add 25 plus 16 to get a 41 there. Now divide both sides of this equation by 999 so that you can isolate the x. If you do it to one side, you've got to do it to, to the other side. By dividing by 999, the 999's divide out on the left, they become a 1. So I just get 1x or x is 840.401 over 999. That's not the usual way we'll, we'll write fractions because we have the decimal point up there. It'd be nice to have integers in both the numerator and denominator. I can do that by multiplying the top and bottom both by 100 to move the decimal point on the top two places to the right and write it like that integer. But if I do it to the top, I've got to do it to the bottom, which means I need to add two zeros in this case. So that fraction is what this number equals. I've got a program that will allow me to uh, reduce that fraction. I'm going to use the program right now without you seeing. That fraction looks like, actually, it's as reduced as it's going to be. That's not usually going to happen, uh, that it's reduced as far as possible. But it seems that this one is. Um, in general, you're going to have to reduce the fraction if you want to make it nicer via prime factorizations or canceling along the way. But th this fraction is reduced as far as it can go. So we can check with the calculator that it seems to work. I'll try to hold this up a little. 84041 divided by 99900. 84,041 divided by 99,900 is, there we go, 0 0.84125125, 1, the 3 is just a rounding up of the next 2 because the 5 that follows. It really is 0 0.84125 with the 125 repeating. So that's kind of interesting. Turns out you can use this method to show that anytime you have a repeating decimal, you're going to get some fraction where the numerator and denominator can be represented as integers. Therefore, any repeating decimal is really a rational number, which should beg a question in your mind, perhaps. What about if you had a decimal that was not repeating? It could have a pattern, like here's a decimal that has a pattern, 0.1, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0. If, if you get to, you know, eventually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, then you'd put a 1, 0 in there before the next 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You'd put an 11 in there, 1, 1, and then a 0. That has a pattern, but it's not a repeating pattern because the 1, the 1, 2, the 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, they keep getting longer and longer. It turns out it can be proved that this is not a rational number. So what kind of ra number is it? Well, if it's not rational, it might make sense to call it irrational, maybe. And that, in fact, in fact is what we call it in math. It's called an irrational number. It does not have a fraction representation where the numerator and denominator can both be written as integers. You can prove that that's, that's the case. Kind of amazing. There are numbers that are not rational. Weird. It is a number, though. And it turns out if you combine the rational numbers and the irrationals, those are called the real numbers. And that's part of the reason for the, the title of the subseries as decimals, real numbers, and percentages. We'll come back and talk about this topic more in the next video.